Hello and welcome to the NC Podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I am the host of this podcast. I'm also the founder of NC Real Estate, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors who want to build a profitable property portfolio that completely aligns with their goals. Well, I'm back. I've had a couple of weeks of guests on the podcast, which has been fantastic. If you didn't listen to last week's podcast with Rachel Kess, one of my best friends, you really should because we had an awful lot of laughs. And then the week before I had Diane, who's one of my team members who came and talked to me about the amazing members club. So it's been a couple of weeks of having some great guests come and sit with me. And today it was a bit like, oh, Natasha, back on your own again. Um, But actually it's a really good chance for me to catch up because I like coming on the podcast sometimes and just talking about what's been going on, what I've been dealing with, what, how life is going. For those of you who didn't know, last week I was back in the UK. I just got back. Uh, at, we're recording this on the Thursday. So I got back on Monday and Monday I was literally just having one of the worst days in the world. I don't know what was going on. I was feeling completely off outside of my comfort zone. I'm just feeling really kind of emotional. We got on the flight and it was an hour and a half of really bad turbulence. And for those of you who were listening to the podcast 12 months ago, you knew that I was doing uh, flying lessons. So I was learning to fly a plane. And at that point, the reason I was doing it is because I had I developed this really irrational fear of flying at that time. Uh, so I wanted to learn how to fly a plane myself. So I understood turbulence and I knew how to work it, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward 12 months and here we are, got on the plane and literally for an hour and a half was just could not just could not make my mind sit still and be like, look, you know, actually what's happening. It's just different changes in air. The airplane is just responding to that. And oh, I was terrified. So um, I got off the plane pretty shaken up. And then uh, going through immigration in US is always a bit of a minefield. Um, The bag was late getting off the plane. And then um, I've got my cleaners from my Airbnb phoning me, Natasha, 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 your tenants have, or your guests have just destroyed your property. <gasps> you have no idea how much I just wanted to get into bed and hide. I was like, I'm stressed because that flight just scared the hell out of me. And I am stressed even more because I've just had to go to, through immigration and get questioned by a really grumpy immigration staff. And now you've told me that my flat may be destroyed. And quite frankly, I don't know where my bag is right now. Long story short, the flat actually wasn't as destroyed as my cleaners had told me. Um, they'd spent three hours putting the flat back together and I, they did such a good job. So I'm so pleased that um, they put it all back together and it's now looking back in good shape. I've had to order a few bits and pieces, broken shower rail, broken bin, dirty table, all of that all been replaced. Um, and I've taken it up with Airbnb. It was just one of those days, my gosh. So I wanted to tell you that I have bad days too. When they're bad, they just seem to go on for a lifetime, <laughs> one day fit into a whole year. Um, so I have dealt with that with the guests. I've told them how much they need to pay me. I'm going through Airbnb's re dispute resolution service right now. I will let you know how that goes because we're still right in the midst of it. Um, that's all I can say about that. Um, so last week I was in the UK. What was I doing? So I had gone back to the UK um, for a number of reasons. The first one being is that on the Monday I had an event in central London for first time buyers. And I was invited to speak about my experience of being a first time buyer. And I'd actually, when I was buying my first property, it was an investment property. That's what I did. So I shared my experience experience. There was a mortgage broker and a couple of solicitors there as well. So the conversation was really interesting. And there were so many people who were just eager to get on the property ladder. So I hope that's made a little bit of a difference. Um, and then the Tuesday and Wednesday, I was at the university because I had to pop back in, check over moderation for my master's level students who've just finished their last um, 
semester. Grays will be coming out within the next couple of weeks on that, I think. And it's always good to pop in and check up and see what's going on, um, especially because then this week the new semester started. So at UCM, it's a real quick change around. We go from semester to semester. Um, and this year in particular, it, or this season, season this semester it's quite a quick changeover because uh, in the autumn semester I teach on the masters and the undergraduate program and the undergraduate program runs a lot later than the postgraduate program does so by the week that the undergraduate program ends the um, postgraduate program starts so I wanted to go in a just talk to my colleagues about that, what we're preparing for the new semester. We've got new technology that we're using in order to host webinars and lectures. So it was a whistle stop tour through that, but I was in Reading for a couple of days, just getting to grips with what's going on, closing off the old semester and starting the new semester. And then on the Thursday, I was in Bath, um, I'm getting my bathrooms redesigned. And so I was um, popping in and out of different bathroom stores. Um, I started at Ripples, I went to um, the bathroom store, popped into other little um, niche shops to Bath to see if I could pick anything up that was uh, locally made. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting that designed over the next couple of months. Again, I'll keep you updated with the design process. All I did was the initial conversations to get a feel for how much these stores are going to charge me because I had a figure in mind. So again, this is a completely moving story, but I had to be in the country in order to be able to do that. I like to feel things. I like to see what's going to go in my properties. And I like to be very hands on with the design process. So that, that was a real... Uh, kind of a uh, rush around all the shops but I had some I did manage to spend a, a little bit of time with um with each designer to figure out what they're offering and they're going to send me three samples so hmm, watch this space it's quite an exciting time and then the final part of the week was all about wedding planning. Chris flew in we had to give notice to get married which we have done um needed to choose the flowers, wanted to speak to a wedding dress designer. It just seemed to like add up, add up, add up all these things that we had to do. Luckily, we got it done. And by um, Saturday afternoon, I had my hair trial for my wedding. And I was a bit like, I, I just have to go to sleep now. The week was so busy. So Sunday, I took the day off to just sleep. And then I got back on the plane on the Monday and had that horrendous day. So that's what I've been doing. Um, got back to New York and on Wednesday Wednesday yeah Wednesday I had to ha hand in my assignment for my teaching qualification um if you didn't know I was I'm also doing a teaching qualification on the side because as a lecturer you need to do this to become a fellow of the higher education academy I think that's what it's called um I've been doing that, but I've been really, really struggling. It just to me seems like it's one step too far. And this assignment was group work and it has been a nightmare getting everybody together. And I mustn't be helping it. I mustn't have been helping it because I'm on a different time zone. But also because I'm running a business, I'm lecturing and I still have to have my private life going on as well. I just the, this teaching qualification has kind of pushed me to the brink of being like, ah, my life is in overwhelm. Um, so I was so glad to get that done. I have another two assignments left to go on that this year, but it's all my own work. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit more calm. that I'm just going to be left alone now and I can just do those assignments in my own time, which means that if I need to work late at night, I can work late at night. Or if I choose to get up early in the morning and do it, I can. Working as a group has been great, but it throws me off my time scales. And I'm very much set in a routine at the moment where um, I get up in the morning, I do an hour of work, I take the dog for a walk, I go to the gym and then I work for the rest of the day taking some time off for lunch and that's really goes so well for me actually I've settled into that routine quite nicely but the fact that I've had to be doing this group work for that for Oxford Brooks has meant that in the mornings I haven't been able to get the dog out on time and if I don't get the dog out on time that kind of she can get very barky if she hasn't had a walk and then if I'm doing a webinar or if I'm on one-to-one -one calls or it leaves me feeling a bit panicky that she's just going to go off and start barking because she wants to go out. So 
I am so relieved that that is done. So relieved. I cannot tell you. I do not mind what the mark is. As long as it's a pass, I am happy. I really, I'm at that stage with it where, do you know what? I would just like to get it over the line. I've done degrees in the past. I've done a master's in the past. I have the education. This has just been one step too far. I'm just like, give me the hoops. I'll jump through the hoops. And that is about as much as I will do. Probably not the most motivational thing. And if you're a student of mine and you're listening to this and you're thinking, Natasha, that's not really the best example to be sitting. Let me tell you, sometimes you have to prioritize things. And I find that at the moment, I've had to really prioritize things to make sure that I'm doing things well. I've learned a lot over the past couple of years that I cannot do everything really well. I have to focus on one thing and make that a success. Once that's a success, I can focus on the next thing. So sometimes other things have to fall by the wayside and it is priorities. Yes, I need that qualification and I will pass that qualification. That's not the issue. The issue is I just don't need a distinction in it. It's not at the forefront of my mind. It's not causing me sleepless nights or anything like that, which is a change. When I was doing my master's and my undergrad, I really wanted high marks and I got so frustrated that I was not getting them. Um, we're on a bit of a role reversal at the moment. So there we have it. That is, that's been what's happening over the last couple of weeks. It's been busy. I felt like I haven't really stopped to um, have a pause, but I'm glad I've got a lot done. It's been, um, sitting back and reflecting on it today I, f I feel like I achieved what I needed to achieve by going back to the UK everything was done um, and I'm now going to give myself a little bit of permission to take a couple of days out um, to just chill and bring my life down a little bit back into that relaxed state because I find it very hard when I've been overwhelmed really really busy to be able to switch back off and even if I'm uh, I've got five ten minutes to myself I find myself on Netflix going okay, I'm going to watch this. I watched 10 minutes of it. I hate this. Turn it off. Next thing. Oh, I'm going to watch a bit of this. Oh, I hate it. Turn it off. And that means that I'm not very good at relaxing. I feel like I'm a bit antsy and all over the place. So I'm going to have to spend a couple of days remembering how to relax again. Um, so there we go. That's been my last couple of weeks. So what did I want to talk to you about today? What's my main topic? Well, I want to talk to you about confidence because it's a topic that has come up a lot for me recently and a lot in my uh, WhatsApp group chats, actually. I have, uh, I'm probably the same as uh, you where I have a number of different WhatsApp group chats all flashing up at the same time. Um, and I have WhatsApp group chats for uh, some of my friends who I met through doing the mental health things. I've got it for the for my APC candidates because I'm an APC mentor. Um, I've got it for my friends. I've got it for my family. Loads of different um, different places where I'm having these conversations. And confidence is a, is a big thing that everybody is talking about at the moment because it seems to have been that at the beginning of 2019, a lot of my friends and a lot of my family are taking steps forward into places that they didn't realize that they were going to be and they're having to make decisions and choices that they didn't realize that they were going to make before. And this is the same for a lot of my members in the members club as well. It, they're pushing boundaries and pushing boundaries can make you feel incredibly scared and incredibly kind of on edge. Um, and finding the confidence to be able to, to move forward towards your goals is really essential to be able to do anything because if you're not confident that you can even make a little bit of a change then uh, you can't you don't go anywhere because you're so fearful of what can happen and I wanted to discuss this as well because everybody's when we're having these uh, conversations around confidence uh, my friends often say to me, but Natasha, you have a lot of confidence because you go out and you do all of this. You get up on stage and you talk to people or you do this podcast and you put everything out there or, you, you know, you weren't afraid to launch your own business. Trust me, all of those things are incredibly terrifying terrifying. If I actually took a second to think about it, I'd be scared. If you came to the event last Monday, I was on stage, I was talking and I was, I picked up my water at one stage and I couldn't hold it because I was shaking so much. I was like, 
oh, come on, get it together. How often do you do these kind of talks where you have to be on stage in front of people? It's not, you know, but it's that adrenaline going through you. I can't control that. Um, and first and foremost as well, so I, confidence takes practice, but I also get imposter syndrome. Sometimes I walk into something and I think, what? How, how do you expect me to know about this? Like I'm a 29 year old who just quite frankly tries her best. And I talk myself down in my head when actually I know completely what's going on. So I get it. I, I absolutely get imposter syndrome as well. It's uh, it can be deliberating even, even to the extent sometimes where, um, I don't believe the stuff that I've done. So if I think about what I've helped my clients with in the past, I think, really, was that you? You were there? Were you? And I have to write it down and be like, yes, you were. And I look back through my notes. And I'm like, yes, this is the advice that you've given. And this is the outcome that's happened. And I think our brain can, take, can play tricks on us. And I just want to say, I get it too. Imposter syndrome happens to me all the time. And I have to curb that because otherwise I will constantly play small. And, and just to let you know, I do play small until I catch myself. I think everybody does. It is complete confidence thing because you think if I put my head above the parapet here, oh my gosh, um, what are they going to say to me? What are they going to do to me? And uh, I've, I've had to rein that in and go, do you know what? Shout about how good you are because nobody else is going to do that for you until you show them that you're good. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, she's actually got a point. But what goes with that is the fact that I have to realize that not everybody is going to like me and that's okay. That's taken a lot of time because I'm, I like to please people. I would love to help everybody with everything at the price that they want to pay. And I'd love to give them like assurances that everything is going to be okay and I can move the world for them. And I just can't. I, I, I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good. And so I also have to understand that every time I put myself out somewhere in a situation, not everybody who receives me is going to think, Natasha, okay, you're doing really well. Some people will take a huge offense at what I'm doing, regardless of whether I've got the best intentions and other people just won't like me. And that has got to be okay. So that is the first tip that I can give you on confidence. If you're looking to find some confidence, remember, you be you because you can't be anybody else. Don't start altering yourself for anybody else. But also remember that whatever situation you're going into, not everybody is going to like you and it's okay. It is okay. It's the way of the world. You don't get on with everybody. And to be quite frank, I don't mind not getting on with everybody because some people are awful. They really are. So just, just take it from there to start off with. If you're feeling unconfident and you're worried about what other people think, turn up and be you. That's all you can do. Don't put anything on. Don't try and be somebody else. Just be you. And if the other person doesn't like you, that's on them. That's not you. Nothing to do with you. It's not a reflection on you. As long as you've turned up and you're being the best that you possibly can be and your intentions are good, how other people receive that, it's just, it can't be you. It can't be you. That's just their, them internally. So then when you're thinking about finding confidence, sometimes it's a bit of fake it until you make it. And I am a huge advocate for this because there are times I go into situations and I think, hey, what? on earth. And I'm naturally quite a shy person. You might not believe that, but I am. I, whenever I go into a situation, I have to listen first because I like to be on um, the, res I like to be knowing what's going on in a situation. And I get shy because I'm nervous and I don't want to mess up what's coming out of my mouth. And also, when I get nervous in new situations, I forget people's names. I have a real bad habit for doing that. You, I could walk into a circle and shake everybody's hand and you tell me your name and then I forget it. I'm a far better person one-on-one -on -one or one-on-a-couple 
you know, one of one on a, one with a couple of people so that I can get to know you and your name. So I'll have been around the circle, like fr- freaked myself out, forgotten people's name, now be feeling completely unconfident. I won't be focusing on what the conversation is. Instead, I'll be trying to remember what someone's name is and that's it, game over. So I've now had to start resetting the situation. It's okay if I don't remember someone's name because I can ask their name again and I make a point of doing that. Um, If I'm speaking to someone, I just go, oh, I'm really sorry, Um, I didn't catch your name. And then they they give me their name and I'm like, okay, remember that because I'm karma, I can do that. Um, And then I make a point of listening to what's actually going on in the situation and properly listening, not thinking about what I'm, what I'm going to say next or when I've got to say something. I think about actually what's going on. Do I have anything to add? If I don't have anything to add, I don't say some anything. If I do have something to add, then I do say something. So I find my presence in the situation and listen. And that changes my confidence because now I'm on par with everybody else and I know what's going on. And then the next part is to stand in a situation like you are confident. Who cares what's going on in the inside if you can, on the outside, project this air of confidence? So that is standing up straight, shoulders back, looking directly at the person who's talking to you, or just acknowledging yourself in the room, being filling the room, filling the space, not like shrinking back, not crossed over, hands like in front of you. If you're stood up straight and you're stood up tall and proud, you look confident. You're giving off this air of confidence. And from that place, then you can start speaking. You can really be a present in that situation. I find that helps my confidence, but that's a bit of a fake it until you make it thing as well, which you you kind of got to do in some situations. I have to do it all of the time. And then it's also about being brave. And I'll go back to the point that happened that I said at first, where sometimes you've just got to put yourself into a situation. And being brave is all about taking that first step. And it gets easier the longer you're in a situation to be brave. So you've just got to make that first entrance. And then from there, just keep going. And I always think to myself, I'm always like, if I'm going to say a networking event, or if I'm going to speak to a new person, or I'm getting on a phone call with someone that I don't know, I always do this thing in my mind where, say the event's going to last an hour. I'm like, Say it's quarter, say it's gonna happen at six and it finishes at seven and it's quarter to six now. I say to myself, by quarter past seven, I will be out of here and in the coffee shop having a having a cup of coffee and a red velvet cake. So I give myself something to look forward to afterwards, and I think at that point I'll be feeling really, really relieved. So do you know what? Grab hold of that that feeling that's going to happen in an hour and a half and use it now to propel me into the situation that I'm going to. And that is also a really good tip for finding confidence. And finally, I have a tip for you. And this is, this is something which requires you to actually do something. And I find this really, really, really useful. And I was talking to one of my friends about this when she's looking for a new job over the last couple of days. So pen and paper at the ready, because you're going to want to write this down and then give this activity a go. Trust me, it works. So stick a picture of yourself on a blank piece of A3 paper and then draw a line through the middle, not through your face or anything, but just (laughs) through the middle. And then on one side, write down everything you are absolutely everything you are, your morals, your beliefs, what you enjoy doing, where you've come from, everything, just everything that's significant to you. You might like red colour or you might like a green colour or you might like ice cream, you know, whatever it is that's really important to you, write that down on one side of the paper because that's you. And then on the other side of the paper, write down everything you want in life, everything you know, what are you looking for? What are you going to do in the next five years? How much would you like to earn? Do you know, everything, everything that you're looking for. And then make those wants, what you're looking for, your non-negotiables. This is your non-negotiable in life. That's what you're aiming for. Every time you go into a situation, you then look at it and you think, 
okay, how does this match up with my non-negotiables? Is it getting me towards that place? If it's not, then you can go, okay, that's cool. This is not for me right now. But if it gets you closer, you can go, "Mm mm-hmm, this is what I want. And only ever compromise if it feels good in your gut. So if you've got a good gut feel and you're like, "Mm, it doesn't really uh, align with my non-negotiables, but you know what? I really like it. Then fabulous, make the compromise. But having that massive A4 piece, A3 piece of paper in front of you with all of that written down gives you the ability to actually know who you are, what you want, and go into a situation with confidence, knowing that you can actually uh, bring that towards you, your non-negotiables towards you. And I think that for me, having things on paper is something that, oh my gosh, I absolutely need. I'm a very visual person with the things that I want and I'm trying to achieve. So if I can write it down, um, I'll always carry a notebook or uh, and a pen, or I'll be writing on my notes on my iPhone. That's what I do to give myself that pep talk, to make sure that I'm doing things that align with what I want to do. And it also reminds me of things. It reminds me to go out there and have the confidence to get what I want. And it's hard. It takes practice. But these are some really good tips, feeling confident in situations. And once you feel that confidence, you can go out there and do exactly what you need to do to get you closer to those goals. So I hope that's been useful. Use it in anything. I give that to my property investors, my members, my friends, my family. I It can be hard to kind of cultivate a confident outlook and being confident in a situation. But if you use those tools and take that with you, that should really, really help you. So I hope that's been really useful for you. Leave a comment and let me know. And if you like this podcast, don't hesitate to push like and give me a five star review. I would love that. And if you want to find out more from me, head on over to www.ncrealestate.co.uk. And if you want to join in the property investment conversation, come over to my Facebook community, which is Property Investment Mastery. I will put the link below. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Natasha C. Collins. Thank you for joining me this week. I cannot wait to catch up with you again soon.